Well, hi guys and girls, Emma again. Welcome back to the spare room. This is the next part of this Patreon series. We got a bit out of order. I had no intentions of doing so, but tubing in 42mm OD in copper is a little bit hard to find in Australia. Now, Stevenson's Plumbing in the UK and McMaster Car, I believe, have it. Mine's coming and I'll put some links up when it arrives and gives people a bit of a heads up where you can buy it. Stevenson's were pretty easy to deal with and their tubing is on the way so we'll get onto boilers eventually. However We've got a stack of these bamboo trays from the kit from Kmart or somewhere like that just for, for projects which are really good to keep everything in order but the next project really is front, ex front axle ex assembly which is this part here it's got two wheels one each end and we've already addressed them and got them going so they're they're nice and we've done the the dome nuts or well, you probably have um these have still got the the plated ones on it but we've done the dome nuts and we've done an axle a pretty straightforward work next thing is to find some 0.6 stainless steel sheet and that's what this is nice flat bit and we're going to mark it out so I'm going to paint this with a bit of blue because this is pretty hard to see on camera in particular and fairly difficult to see anyway so I'm going to blue it up have a look this is fairly well over in the in the instruction sheet uh, this axle is actually on page 78 if you've downloaded the book so on page 78 we've got the axles and we've got this piece here which goes around the axle uh, if we have a look at the picture on the front goes underneath with the holes underneath and we've got a yoke that goes over the top so they're today's projects first one is this piece here which is actually 24 millimeters by 78 millimeters fairly basic backing out if you've printed this out don't get marking blue all over your book uh, probably the best way to print this I think if you if you download it is to print it double sided back to back it should all be in the right order check it before you print it and say if you're doing it twice and spiral, spiral bind it so you've got something that will lay flat and it doesn't matter a lot if it gets dirty but you've got the book there um, I did that to this book um, give you some idea this is Dayak the Sarawak trophy engine and two and a half inch gauge it's reading material really but it cost me about $15 Australian, so it was well worth the trouble to have that on the bench so I could look at it and lay it flat and read all the instructions. Wasn't a huge job. We're going to be doing a fair bit of this layout work um, for this project, and I've got Die Mark Layout Blue, a layout stain. I bought a litre of it, which is probably going to last me about three lifetimes. And quite often the bottle gets topped up with metho when it feels like it's getting a bit thick, so or white spirit or whatever. Uh, methylated spirits, we call it here. And that tends to, it tends to evaporate more than I'll ever use it. It just feels like. I'm going to have a decent paintbrush, which is what I tend to use for layout because you don't get as many streaks. This is quite thin sheet, 0.6 stainless, and it, 
I think Kenneth has probably put it down as stainless for a couple of reasons. Um, I think anything could probably do. And a bit of a bit of ordinary steel, or even a bit of brass would do the job. But this will last longer because it's got a it's got a hole that runs through it with a bolt and I feel that probably brass is just going to wear out pretty quick. It could probably also be milled out of solid without too many troubles, but this is probably the easy and quick way to do it. And We'll let that dry. We also need for the fork, we need a piece of 1.6 mild steel of some sort. 12 millimeters by th by 38 which we could probably easily use a bit of brass there's a bit there that would do the job 1.6 and bend up nice and easy I've got a bit of 1.6 brass there and I might lay that out that's going to do the job it's just a bit of scrap So we're going to need some pretty basic layout work, uh, gear. The combination square, this is a nice one, it's more and right. Um, this is one of the luxury things that I bought myself a few years back. Uh, Starrett make a really nice one too, but you can get a pretty good tool in the second hand market. Uh, this one's only Starrett from America. It's pretty nice, and this is actually coming in what's in the box, toolbox giveaway. That's only got imperial measurements on it, which is good, I guess, if you're in America or in 1950. But um, try and find one with a metric rule. That's a pretty good tool. It's nicely balanced, a nice feel to it, really nice finish. Everything slides, and it's nice and accurate. And it's still got the scriber in it. Um, quite often they're missing and not so much that that's a big deal because I don't think I've ever used a scribe out of a square but it's um, bargaining power if you're at the flea market and there's one for sale and it's missing this one of course is a bit more modern and this actually screws in but that's I think that's got a plastic cap on it and a thread And it's got a little spirit level too, which may or may not be useful sometimes. So that's a combination square. Usually they come with some extra parts. There's a bevel protractor, which has got a, a level in it as well. And on this side it's got the, the measurements, or the, the degrees marked. It's a fairly useful thing for, for odd angles. And this one's for marking the center of a bar. This is pretty useful too. So, and you may or may not find one in a box, but if you find one with the bits on it and then find the bits, they're available and they're out there and they're on eBay. It's probably worth the, the messing around to put together a, a good quality set rather than to just buy a Chinese aluminium one that's probably not going to feel will be much good. You've got it forever. We're probably going to need a set of offset calipers or Jenny Lake calipers for marking the edge of the sheet. That's a pretty useful thing. You can make a set up pretty quick but if you're digging around in boxes at flea markets they turn up. Usually they're adjustable on the end so you can resharpen them. So if it looks a bit ugly rub over with a file and some steel wool and touch on the grinder and you've got a new tool. We're probably going to need some dividers. These are more and right from from England, Sheffield, England. Um, just a fairly nice pair of dividers. They're available too. Don't, you can rush out and buy new ones but to be honest an old set, as long as there's plenty of length left in them, you can always resharpen them. They want to be pretty sharp. And we're going to need Scriber. This is, of course, the amazing Randy Richards 
subscriber. I've got a couple of them. This one was made for me fairly early on. It's got Emma Ritson written on there. I'm um, serial number 16079 USA RR in the shop. That's a nice scribe. So I've got a stainless steel one too. If you're looking for quality tools, a good place to start is by following some of these tool makers and and machinists on YouTube. They often make nice things and move them on and sell them. This was one of those things that is well worth the money. It was it was fairly expensive, but it's a quality tool. It's nicely finished. It's got your name on it. It's kind of worth the money. Anyway, I've just set that at 78 mil, no 78 millimeters. If we carefully mark that there, if we just hang this over the side of the bench, we can get nice and square and nice and flat on the work. And carefully mark that off there. We need a bit that's 24 millimeters wide. So if we set this again to 24, it's not a huge piece of sheet metal, just like that. We do exactly the same thing. Now we need to cut this out. I'm probably going to like mark the rest of it out. So what we've got, this bends up into a C-section. So we've got two lines all the way through. We need to mark the center and we need to mark these off on a bit of an angle. Not a huge deal. Easy way to do this is just to mark the or set the, the jenny leg or the, the dividers onto that line off the end of the ruler. We can easy mark a line along there. And we might have to do some maths here. This this might be, this drawing's a little bit hard to follow. If we have a look, it's 20 mil overall. The hole is 3 mm back from the edge. These bends are 5 mm back from each edge. And it's 4 mm in the middle. So that, if we take the 4 mm off the 24, that means that this line is 10 mm from here to here. So metric's pretty easy to work out like that. If we set another line at 10 mm, I might just go ahead and cut that out and we can mark the other side the same and then we've got two bits that's going to look the same. Actually using aviation snips which are pretty easy to get hold of. I'd love a bench shear and that's going to happen at some point this year um, with a lever that I can easily bend these out but right now it hasn't. These are straight um, straight snips rather than being left or right handed. And this one too. You get right out on the end of your handle. I mean, these are nearly too big for me. But if you get right out on the end of the handles, you've got more leverage to, to cut sheet metal. On this point, six mil stainless is pretty easy with with these with these snips. We've got a little bit of sheet metal. It's not huge.
we're going to run along the other side there. And we'll set these at 10 millimetres. Just like that. We want to drill one hole, um, three millimeters from the edge. You may be good enough to to fold this up so that the holes line up in the end. But the way I'm going to do it is to drill one hole while it's flat, fold it all up, then drill through the hole um, into the other side and that way we'll have two holes that are in line and they're both in the same spot. We need to chop this off here so I'm going to mark the centre next. And we're 78 millimetres long and half of that is 39. I just set that like that and run across it with the with the scribe. Both ways, and we probably the lines won't line up, but they're not far out. So we're gonna live with that. Job would be to center punch this, and another job is to get a little steel rule and carefully scribe these angles on here. We want to line up the center line here. Nice and carefully. Take your time to do this because accurate layout is the foundation of your job really. Without that you've got nothing. So I'm going to center punch that. Just like that. And I'm going to drill in 3.3mm uh, which is clearance on on a on an eighth or three mil screw, you can see where that center punch has nearly come right through. It's a very thin material. So next job is to drill that and carefully cut these off, and we'll look at bending them. So I very carefully drilled the hole, and I've cleaned this up in the file in the vise too which is with a flat file just draw filed it backwards and forwards in the vise this way um get nice neat even lines that way and we've got the piece so next job i found a bit of 3 16 brass which is about the same diameter as the as the axles or the same thickness as the axles are around i'm going to use that to to fold this over it's something that probably could be done in a in a brake press or something, but it's pretty tiny and very easy to mess up. So what I'm going to do is set this up in here and carefully bend it over. Just with this, this piece of bar nicely, it's just a piece of scrap, the right thickness. nicely on that line and we're going to bend him over if your vice isn't quite big enough like this one it might be a really good idea to get another piece of material and put it behind it just to if you've got enough fingers could also get another vice but if we've got enough fingers I might just put that behind there like that 
and that gives us a long enough jaw to to support the work all the way through. Just gently, not that bends over pretty easily there, so. The smart thing probably would be to do this in the other bench vise, but the lighting and the um, and the space to sit around there by that vise is a little bit compromised sometimes, so we might persevere with this. We've got a piece bent like that, fairly quickly and easily. So what we should have is a little piece that looks something like this. What we're going to find is that if I put a ruler across that, that this isn't quite square here there's a bit of a gap under one side and if we look at it we can see that so if you've got a bit of 316 tool steel might be the answer to put in there to hold it but I'm just going to file that so that it's even on both sides uh, if we have a look that sits in there nicely and hopefully without too many problems that axle should clear the hole and it looks like it probably will just so that should be really good so the secret here will be to clean this up nicely get it all nice and even and drill this hole the rest of the way through with the same drill and we'll have a bit more of a look at it so bit of messing around and this is what we've got. I've got probably maybe a millimetre, millimetre and a half gap there. That won't hurt. They want a little bit. Next job is it says to use pliers and that seems like a pretty good idea. All we're going to do is to squeeze these down so that this doesn't fall off. Probably a pair of needle noses would do, but I've gone for these. Um, they only really want to be positioned on the ends. They don't want to be tight, it wants a little bit of movement. But just to stop it falling off, I'm going to return these. Just gently bend those into place. So that's the main axle support. There's another piece that comes over the top. And I'm going to make him out of this. And that's a U-shape which fits on here. So that, that's starting to look something like a traction engine now. We've already tapped and drilled this whole M3. Now I've marked that out as per the book. It's 12 millimeters wide. And it's got a hole here in the center, which is... It says countersink for a, for a screw. I'm sort of not that impressed with countersink holes and thin sheet. And just looking at this, 
I believe there should be heaps of room here for a so this one needs to be countersunk. Now if we find a 3mm screw when, when you buy screws buy a couple of extras. They're not very expensive usually and you go in and you wrap a change in your pocket around um, that one looks pretty good in the bolt shop if you go to a bolt shop rather than big box hardware and they'll say two bucks for the little few screws that you need and after a bit you'll decide that you probably need to get a few extras so you end up with quite an assortment and these boxes are good to keep them in and then when you need something for a job like this you just go and find it See, that's countersunk in there. Um, that's the next job. Countersinks in sheet metal are generally not a whole lot of fun um, from experience. That screw's a bit long. We can find a shorter one than that. If you've got a proper countersink bit, and you haven't cut the piece out yet it's a good idea to do that now and just be a little bit careful with that um, you'll end up with if you just use a drill bit you're going to end up with a five sided hole and it's going to look a bit ugly so there, there are ways to put a countersink on this and if you get really fussy then cut the piece out and set him up in the drawer and put a countersink on with a tool and that's, a, that's probably the nicest way to do it but a bit of messing around I'm just going to send. I'm just going to countersink that to match that head with my countersink bit. I think that's going to do nicely. I guess the next job probably is to mark this out nicely, or to to cut this out nicely and up to the line. Bit of messing around, but. Um, there's two ways you could do this. You could just cut it to the line, um, bend it up, and then file the pieces to match. It's probably the, the best way to do that. So it's probably what I'm going to do. Now, buy yourself the best hacksaw you can, you can buy. There's some... Pretty so we've got a little piece of of brass there. And this needs to go over this so what I've got is another piece of bar that's the same size and I'm just going to bend it carefully up against that up against that line Give this a tap around so it's nice and square. And do the same with the other side there. 